Okay, uh, we have another tuck point job we're going to be doing here. We're going to be putting a crown on top of this chimney. Sorry for all the background noise, the way it goes. We're going to grind all of these mortar joints out and put new mortar in. And we're going to tighten up this flashing with sheet metal screws, caulk it, paint it. So this is the original mortar. And it's going to come out like a fine powder. So in order to not make a mess on the roof and create a big cloud that's going to dust out all of these cars down here and go all over the plants, we have a dust recovery system on our grinder. Hooks up to the grinder, hooks up to the vacuum hose, to the shop vac. We have our grinding shield, gloves, dust mask, ear protection, a pick hammer. This is to uh, get the, spit, the uh, joints that cannot be reached by a grinder. Use a pick hammer and a tuck pointing chisel. That's a tuck pointing chisel. And a wire brush to get the moss off. We have a dust recovery unit on the grinder that goes up to the shop vac catches about 80 to 90 percent of the dust so we don't put a cloud all over the neighborhood. We're grinding out all these mortar joints on the chimney. We're going to be tuck pointing it, putting in new mortar. We're going to be putting a new crown on top of the chimney and we're going to be tightening the flashing and painting it and caulking it. Okay we've got all the mortar joints ground out. We're going to be putting a new crown on top. Okay, so we've ground out all of our mortar joints and we're going to start squirting up the uh, mortar mix. We have Type S mortar with a bonding agent mixed in it. Here's a bucket trowel. $7 trowel from Lowe's with top two inches cut off so you got a square bottom to scrape the bottom of your bucket. It's a good tip. Grout bag. Uh, getting the mud out of the bag is a combination of keeping it cinched up. You've got this triangle here. Keeping a tight triangle, cinching here, and at the same time kind of squeezing here and squeezing here. It's a bit of an art. It takes a little practice. Do your vertical joints first. And down low, what I like to do is when my bag starts to get um, empty, and you got to go and you got joints way down below, I alternate. And when my bag gets low, I do the uh, work down below because it gives me better control by having uh, less mortar in the bag. It gives me better control when squirting up the joints down low. I'm squeezing with this hand first, and I'm squeezing the back hand to push the mortar forward. You get a rhythm down. The mortar that I'm squirting in, I'm coming out past the face of the brick fairly far because I need some substance to tuck in into the joint. This mix is loose enough to where it's filling the whole joint but you still have to come out, you don't want to be just exactly flush with the brick, you still got to come out about, oh, I don't know, a quarter inch. So see, I've got just a little bit of mud left here and I'm going to go down low. It makes it easier to work with. When you're down low in a tight area, just alternate back and forth. 
your bag gets low, go down low on the structure and uh, squirt it up. Okay, uh, so the mud's uh, enough to where you can leave a fingerprint. Um, start striking. Again, pay attention to your weather. If it's hot, you got to strike sooner. You don't want it to get so hard that you get a lot of resistance. It'll give you a bad joint. When you strike it, it's going to come out really smooth. You want that smoothness because that affects the permeability of the joint of the rain. You want that smooth finish because that helps the waterproof the joint. So I've done some of my uh, vertical joints. Corners, you come in from the corners. If you go out, you're going to pull the corner out. So come in from the corners. On this job, we're using a concave striker. Sometimes they have a flat strike finish. This is concave, round. This is flat. We use the flat striker. If you'll notice down here at the flashing, I was able with the grout bag to squirt mortar back behind here. Use a flat striker to reach back in there and strike that joint. You can't do it with a round one. Nobody's going to see it anyway. It'll look fine. So again, started from the corner and came in. See how the mud's falling off nicely? I'm striking at just the right time. I have a motto. It's called don't fight the strike. And what that means is strike at the exact right time and the mud's set up exactly right and it'll be an easy job. Get a nice smooth finish. That's critical. And then at this point, you let it set up a little bit more and you'll see this extrusion on the sides. You let that set up a little bit more and you get a straight edge of something, a small trowel, a striker, something. You trim it. I'm just going to do this for an example. You trim off the uh, Nerf denards. That's a technical term. And uh, then you grab a brush and brush off some more Nerf denards. And then critical, the second strike to ensure the smoothness of that joint. And you can see that they're kind of rough. Now they're coming smooth. That smooth joint is critical. And then we'll come back and acid wash this a day or two later. And it'll clean up. These are cheap dollar store brushes. They work fine for this. Nice smooth joints. There you are, tuck pointing 101. Okay, here's the almost finished product. We have to wait a day or two and come back and acid wash. You'll get these little mortar stains on the brick and it comes off with a solution of water and muriatic acid. We still have to paint and tighten the flashing. But you get the idea. Nice sloped ground to shed the water. The crown is made of topping mix, which is sand, cement, and pea gravel. Usually you can find it at Home Depot, called, and it's called topping mix.